Let's talk about pirouettes and specifically how your port de bras is, is not part of the turns, not at all. The functional part, right? You don't take momentum or power or anything from the port de bras when you do pirouettes. And I'm going to use uh, Mikhail Barishnikov to demonstrate this fact. So let's look at two videos of him. This is one, I think, in 1969 during the competition. Okay? Now just watch it and, and then we'll slow it down and show you. So watch this. So we'll slow it down. When he prepares for pirouette, right? So he'll prepare, whatever, move his arm here. What you need to notice is that he moves his back, right? He doesn't swing his arms. And, and sometimes in some of the footage, he'll turn with open arms like that. Do you know why? Why would he turn like this? Because it's easier to control your back with your arms in this position versus in the front. See here, it's a tendency for the shoulders to go. Although he's very strong, it, it wasn't gonna happen to him anyway. But nonetheless, right? The arms move from the back, not the shoulders. I mean, obviously there's a shoulder joint and they move, but in, but in a turn, you, you don't want any, any independent movement of the arm and the shoulder separated from the back. Everything stays the back. So here's, here's sort of the anatomy of a turn, right? So the hips initiate the plie, okay? Supported by the core and the back, right? And then as you, so then as you go up into the pirouette or whatever turn you're doing, or jump, same thing, tour, whatever, the momentum, what you feel that you need to get around is your back. It's your back, right? But the back doesn't move separate from the hips once you're really coordinated and strong, right? So it's just a very, 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 very little demi-plie and everything moves at once. That's, that's, how, that's where turns come from. Now, if you'll notice, in 1969, the competition, he, what he did is a little bit, he, he would um, move his back slightly, but it wasn't the arms, it was the back, right? So he'd, and then go. So he would a little bit move the back, which is up to him. Now, watch another clip of him. This is some years later. Obviously, he's in the West. He hasn't had the coaching. I'm pretty sure he's dancing injured a lot of the time. It, it looks like it to me. And what you'll see is that basically same setup, right? But he t turned his back more, right? He turned his back more than when he was younger in 1969. Because uh, I'm guessing, just based on what I see, that he's probably dealing with injuries, so he doesn't have quite the, 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 the power to push into his legs and all that stuff, the pull up and all that stuff. So he's got to use his back a little more, but he still uses his whole back. He's not moving the arms around. He's not moving the arms around. So watch him dance. Watch him dance all the time, and you'll see his back is driving all of his turns, all of his jumps, all of his tours. It isn't the arms, right? So because there's dancers that want to debate me a little bit on, online, hopelessly, and I'm just saying the, arm, the, the port de bras is not there to generate power for, for anything. You see the back working in the arms, but it's not the arms, it's the back, okay? There's that. And so just kind of going forward, dancers, especially professionals, here's the thing. Your world is the stage, right? That's your world. My world is the science of ballet, and my world makes your world possible. Now, it's not that dancers can't get into the science, absolutely. You wanna learn the science? Let's do it. But it is not necessary to know the science to, be, to dance and perform. It certainly would, would, um, it would certainly add depth to a dancer's performing, I think, to understand all of where it goes. But it's a question of not getting too caught in the details to then not be able to move, right? And just dance. Right? So the idea is that I do the science and the coaching so the dancer's free to create the character and to perform. You know, so there's a little bit of risk in loading up dancers with a bunch of sort of tedious details. And then they kind of end up 
getting mechanical about things. So that's why the, the ideal circumstances, you have a coach who's, who understands the science, you have the dancer who understands how to perform, and we marry these two things and you get brilliant results, right?